All right, here's what you've all been asking us for. Over the course of the next few videos, I'm going to show you how you can build dynamic websites using the newest version of Payload, version three, Next.js, the app router, Tailwind CSS, and TypeScript. Now, before we get started, I just wanted to tell you about our own page that we've recently launched, all about payload.com. There isn't a huge load on there yet, but you can already subscribe to our newsletter that we started. We're planning to provide you with, you know, all the news that are going on with Payload itself, with the Payload ecosystem, all Next.js related stuff um, around every two weeks. So if you want, feel free to subscribe. It's completely free. And also let us know in the comments below if there's anything that you're specifically interested. All right, so here's what we're going to talk about. Um, first, I'm going to give you a brief overview and introduction, just a bit of context. Next, in the next video, we're going to set up our MongoDB database and we're using, uh, and we are setting up file storage. We're using S3 for that, but I'm also going to explain alternatives. In the third video, we are getting started. We are setting up our project. We are creating dynamic pages using layout blocks, and we're also deploying on Vercel. So this will be quite a big video. The fourth video will be about auto-generated pages. So pages that you don't just create by yourself, but you have a collection of items. So for example, blog articles or products or something that should then automatically generate pages for you. The fifth part is about keeping your backend, so payload and your frontend in sync, which has become a lot easier in the newest payload version and the new Next.js version, but we still need to talk about it. And last but not least, we are implementing live preview so that you get live feedback while editing a page, how it will look like. We're also implementing metadata and we're doing some performance optimizations especially regarding next images, sizes, etc. Now, what is new in version three? Payload is now a native Next.js app, which is using the app router. This comes with a bunch of advantages, um, also for the developer experience, it's great. For example, you get hot module reloading. So as soon as you change a schema in Payload, so for example, you add a title field to your blog post, it will basically reload instantly and show it to you in the admin panel. Before that, you would have to use NodeMon or you would have to restart the server manually to actually show the changes. Now, custom UI components that we are using in the admin panel are now server components by default. So they can just fetch data as you would with normal server components and then display them in the admin panel. Also, you can now put the front end and back end, so payload, within one repository. This especially makes sense if you're using Next.js as your front-end framework of choice. You can obviously still use Payload with any other front-end framework that you choose. It's just super, super easy to integrate it with Next.js. This also gives you the benefit that you can now use the local API to fetch data directly from your server components. If you remember the old tutorials, you basically had to go through the, the REST API and fetch data from there. You sometimes had to adjust the access control. And now you could basically, in theory, completely close the access control so nobody can access your API at all. Only your server components can fetch the necessary data. And another big thing is you can now deploy your entire project, not just your front end, front end and back end on Vercel, which means it can basically be free if you're on the Vercel Pro plan. Obviously that's 20 bucks a month per user, but you can start for free. Um, the Vercel free plan is pretty pretty good. So this might be a game changer for a lot of you know smaller projects that just want yeah simple, cheap infrastructure. Talking about the code structure and infrastructure, we now have just one main repository in the old series, we were using two, one for the backend, one for the front end. Like I said, it's just a lot cleaner if you're using Next.js anyways to put it into one thing. For the database, we're going to use MongoDB Atlas 
because it provides a great free plan as well. But you could obviously also self-host MongoDB, for example, on Coolify and use that. To store files, so images, videos, we're going to use the S3 object storage. You can get that from Linode, AWS itself. You could use Superbase. But in the next video, I'm going to explain you some alternatives and how you could implement them as well. And last but not least, the deployment happens on Vercel. Like I said, super simple, super straightforward. Now, I was talking about this in the last series as well. Is Payload now similar to WordPress? Payload still does not generate any visible website itself. You don't have those, those templates like in WordPress where you can just, you know, drag and drop something in um, and it's basically done and you have the website. It still just stores the data and enables you to easily manage it through the admin panel, which is generated automatically from your collection schemas. But in version three, it has become a lot easier for your front end components to communicate with the backend and it's easier to keep them in sync. So payload is still a headless content management system or app framework, if you want to call it like that, because it can do a lot more than just a content management system, but the connection is pretty nice. So you're, you're not facing all those issues that you usually get with an actual like headless, headless CMS. And the technical infrastructure is now a lot cleaner. Like I said, only one repository. We don't have to get a server anywhere. We don't have to use railway or a custom VPS or something. We can basically, we can still put it on a VPS of course, but we could just put it on Vercel, deploy it with pretty much one click and it's done. That being said, in the next video, we are going to get our hands dirty and start setting up our infrastructure. If you already have any questions, please let us know down in the comments below. And apart from that, take care and see you in the next video.